beast through power, construct the X. Hey man, you got a lot of new gun owners out there. So we want to take some time to discuss some of the basics. New gun owners are getting a lot of their information from social media and YouTube, and a lot of it is really being sensationalized. And they're skipping the basics, uh, trying to do what they see people do on YouTube and other uh, you know, gun channels or whatever it is that they're getting the information from. So what we're talking about today is your sighting system. Glock 19, let's go ahead and show that we are clear. Nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. So this is a Glock 19. This has your basic sighting system. It has a back sight, a rear sight, and it has a front sight. And you can basically see how that works. Just a basic fundamental sighting system, even though Glocks come with a different back sight. We changed that out because we didn't like the back sight. But this is your basic sighting system. So because of social media and the popularity of red dots, you have first-time gun owners going out buying. Uh, they're, they're just skipping over this process altogether, and they're buying red dots. That's fine. SIG P365, red dot. Let's go ahead and show this firearm to be clear. Nothing in the chamber. Nothing in the magazine. And, you know, you always want to be safe, even making YouTube videos. You know, they say don't even put ammunition in the room, but mine is right over there. Okay. So this is uh, SIG P365. It's come with a Romeo SIG red dot. But... What I want to get to and what I want to specify in this video, if you're going to start out with a red dot, at least have a secondary sighting system. I don't know if I just made that up. I've never heard it, but you're free to use it if you choose to. So a secondary sighting system, meaning that if you have a red dot, that you also have suppressor sights in the back and suppressor sights in the front. Now, However you want to run it, there's going to be a lot of guys out there. Oh, you don't have to have suppressor sights. I don't care as long as you can aim and get good target acquisition. My whole thing is if this optic fails on you for whatever reason, the battery is not, the battery's dead, you pick up the optic. This is a shaking weight. So as soon as it feels motion, it pops on and the optic does not come on and you're in a defensive situation and there is a threat. You want to have a secondary sighting system. Hey, there that word is again. I think I made up a word. Look that up and leave it in the comments for me if you've heard somebody else say that. Always new dialogue in the gun community anyway. So and what I mean by that, I'll show you. Um, here you have suppressor height back sights. This is not part of the optic. Two different systems. Suppressor height, so this is higher than the optic itself, and it matches up with the suppressor height front sight in the front. So you can see through the optic, and you can see your sights, and you can still acquire good target acquisition. So if you're going to go out and buy a firearm with the red dot, and that's a whole nother skill set, you will be a lot more accurate dealing with a red dot, but it's going to take you time to learn to acquire your target using a dot. I really think people should rethink their training or rethink those uh, iron sights that's on this Glock 19. This sighting system is a few hundred years old and it does the job just fine. You know, they've been using sites like these, not this specific kind, you know, these glow at night, but they've been using sites like these, man, since the 1800s on pistols. You know, so they work just fine. But with the advancement in technology, people are running out buying red dots and, hey, man, whatever works for you, but I can shoot just fine with this. I can hit my target. Um, I've shot uh, this gun 50 yards and, you know, hit, hit steel plates. I shot it 100 yards. And hit a steel plate. Aim 11 inches high, 9 millimeter. 
let it drop in. So this is what you don't want. Um, this is what I wouldn't run. So this is my uh, competition gun. I'm really not a competition shooter, but I do like to go out with the, with the homeboys and the comrades and, you know, and the sisters. And we go out and we shoot and we talk noise and, you know, we train. But this does not have any back sights on it, nor does it have a suppressor height front sight. So what the new optic companies are trying to do, they'll just cut some holes. They'll cut a little space in the back of the red dot itself that you can align with the front sight. But this back sight on the red dot is higher than the front sight. So you know, I want everything to go together, man. That's why I say suppressor height sights. So this is not a good secondary sighting system for me. That's why I would never carry this firearm, particularly as a self-defense firearm, because I don't have a backup uh, ability to acquire a target the way that I feel comfortable with in the event that my red dot does not come on. So I'm hoping that this helps some of our new gun owners who are going out there buying firearms for the first time and you opt to Instead of using steel sights or regular sights on a regular gun, you you, you opt to go with something with the uh, red dot already on it. And no problem with that. Just make sure you have some type of secondary sighting system in the event that that optic fails. So, again, Instructor X of the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, each one, teach one, peace and power, train or die.